English king Henry VIII got a nickname Bluebeard as he got rid of his six wives, but the first Tsar of Russia, Ivan the Terrible, would be a good competitor. Seven of his wives either mysteriously died, sent into exile, or even murdered by him. Right after Ivan the Terrible became a Tsar, he decided to have a bride selection. All boyars were required to send their daughters and other female single relatives to the palace. Out of all beauties, Ivan the Terrible chose Anastasia. She was the daughter of Akonichi, the top-ranked boyar. Her uncle was Ivan the Terrible's guardian when he was little. Maybe that affected Tsar's decision. Nevertheless, Anastasia was very beautiful and slim. She had all the merits – chastity, modesty, piety, and beauty. Ivan the Terrible adored his wife and listened to her opinion. She smoothed his hot temper and taught him kindness. Under her influence, Tsar denied death sentences, went to the monasteries, released prisoners, and rejected bloody games, like bear and dog baiting of jesters. Her free time Anastasia usually spent in her room, stitching. She had six children from Ivan the Terrible, but majority of them died in infantry. Only two sons survived, Ivan, who Ivan the Terrible presumably killed by himself after a fight, and Fyodor, who became a Tsar in 1584. Anastasia died in 1560, when she was 30 years old. Hundreds of people gathered for her funeral. Poor people even refused to accept alms, which were usually given during funerals. They said it was not good to accept money for such a saint. Ivan the Terrible cried and barely walked on the funeral. He was sure that his wife was poisoned by boyars. In 2000, scientists found a proof. In her remains, they found high level of arsenic, lead, and mercury. The amount could not be so high from cosmetics that contained poisonous substances in medieval times. The debate about new wife started after Anastasia's funeral. Ivan the Terrible wanted to marry Polish king's sister, Catherine, but the king demanded Novgorod, Pskov, and Smolensk for his sister. Ivan the Terrible refused. He sent matchmakers to Cherkas Dukes. Soon, 16 years old Kuchine and her brother arrived to Moscow. She was presented to Ivan the Terrible, and he was astonished by her beauty, and they got married. After baptizing, she received name Maria. Historians say that she was wild and cruel. She refused stitching and preferred to accompany Tsar in military campaigns, hunting, public executions, and bear baiting. Unlike Anastasia, Maria did not try to calm down Ivan the Terrible. On contrary, she stirred Tsar's brutality and suspiciousness. Her only child, Vasily, died at the age of two months. Maria died in 1569, and Ivan the Terrible thought it was Boyar's fault again. Ivan the Terrible did not consider Marfa as his wife, as they were married only for 15 days. In 1571, Ivan the Terrible had another bride selection. 2,000 girls were gathered in total, 24 best ones were selected, and later only 12 remained. Ivan the Terrible preferred Marfa. Her family was very happy. Her father received a boyar's title, brother became Tsar's servant, and cousin was in charge of his food. Right after engagement, Marfa got sick. Nobody could understand what was the disease. That was very strange, because Marfa was not only the most beautiful out of 12 nominees, but also the healthiest one. Additionally, doctors checked all the girls before showing them to the Tsar. In 15 days, Marfa died. Ivan the Terrible said that she was poisoned. During the investigation, 20 people were executed. Her father was forced to become a monk, and brothers were killed due to the sorcery. One of hypotheses is that Marfa was poisoned by relatives of ex-wives. Another one assumes that Marfa's mother gave her some potion for fertility, which killed her. 
but investigation in 1990s showed that there was no poison in Marfa's remains. If only poison was made from plants, then for 360 years it would disappear. After Marfa's death, Ivan the Terrible gathered a council in Moscow. He announced that after death of three wives, he would dedicate his life to God, but because Russia is in danger, he would remain on throne and marry for the first time. The church prohibited the fourth wedding, but Ivan the Terrible said that Marfa could not be counted as wife because there was no consummation. The church recognized his marriage with Marfa invalid and allowed to marry him. His new wife was Anna, who was the second in bride's contest. The marriage continued only for six months. Ivan the Terrible forced Anna to become a nun. Historians do not know the precise reason. Some say that Boyars hated Anna and made Tsar send her into exile. The others say that she had many conflicts with Aprichniki, but the simplest reason could be that Ivan the Terrible just got bored with her. For the fifth time, Ivan the Terrible even did not try to get church permission. He got married with the daughter of one of the boyars. The wedding was small, only family. Anna was quiet and timid, and looked like a nun rather than Tsaritsa. She didn't like to go out and was scared of being jinxed. Ivan the Terrible got bored very soon. After one year of marriage, he sent her to the monastery. Vasilisa was married to Ivan the Terrible's close friend, Milenti, who was eager to accomplish any order of the Tsar. One time, Ivan the Terrible visited his house and was astonished by Vasilisa's beauty. Later, he ordered his friend to send his wife to his palace. But Milenti refused, saying that Vasilisa was sick. Ivan the Terrible came to their house to check on her, and after his visit, Milenti died. Probably Vasilisa was not sick, and Ivan the Terrible punished her husband for lying. The widow moved to the palace and started to live with Ivan the Terrible. He fulfilled all her whims. He kicked out all the other women from the palace. Vasilisa didn't like parties and executions, so Tsar stopped them as well. They were together for two years until the Tsar found a man in her bed. Vasilisa and her lover were buried together and she was still alive. The last one, Maria Nagaya, was a daughter of Okolnici. Maria was beautiful, tall, had big eyes and long braid, which was a Russian standard of beauty. By that time, Tsar was 50 years old, and Maria did not want to marry him, but her opinion was not important. After a wedding, she could not get along with the prince's wives. Maria demanded obedience and respect, considering herself more powerful, but they resented. Ivan the Terrible was tired of women's arguments and promised to feed Maria to the dogs, and after that, Maria calmed down. In 1582, their son Dmitri was born, and two years later, Ivan the Terrible passed away. Maria and her son were sent into exile to Uglich town, and when Dmitri was nine years old, he died. He was either killed or died during an epilepsy attack. That's it for today. I hope you like those stories about Ivan the Terrible's wives. Please subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!